Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be taking a quick look at the Anycubit Craftsman resin. So I thought I'd make a quick series of videos. Basically any new resin I get, I'm going to do a first print test video. Um, and I'm going to be looking at a few things. So we got the first one which is cost. Second, do I get any failed prints during the um, initial test print? And also, what the obviously the quality and flexibility of the overall miniature turns out like. So let's start off with this Craftsman resin. I picked this up on eBay for sixteen pounds per kilogram. So this is actually at the cheaper end of the resins that I've used. So to compare that with one of the Soriatech fast resins, at the moment that is available on Amazon for forty pounds a bottle. So this comes in at actually under half the cost. So hopefully we'll get some good results. I must say that the Soriatech resin has given me fantastic results and it's my go-to resin, especially the navy grey or the navy blue. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, look at our setup. So for our printer we have the Sonic Mini 8K from Frozen and this is actually one of the newest printers out on the market at the moment. The build volume is actually pretty good considering it's uh, a considered mini printer. I think actually comparing it to one of the bigger printers from Frozen it is actually definitely one of the larger um, build volumes for such a, um, a compact printer. Then we've got our ultrasonic wash station. I wish I actually bought a bigger version because um, I actually opted for the smaller one. Um, which is about a one litre one. Annoyingly on the Amazon website it showed it as the um, bigger one, so on the picture it showed it as the bigger one, but in fact it is actually the smaller one, which was a bit annoying. So I did think I was getting um, a bigger machine. Then we got the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station. Now with this, um, originally I was using this to wash my prints, but I did find that the ultrasonic cleaner is um, better. I found that it got into all the crevices and sort of cleaned the print a lot better than the wash and cure station but obviously the wash station will be better for bigger prints because obviously I won't get them into this little one. For curing it's pretty good um, so you just click that button and you can cure it you know I only cure my minis for about one or two minutes. Then we've got a little pot there we've got some um, used IPA, I keep it in that sealed container so no UV lights can get in there and then we have our bit dirty IPA there and that's basically what I use um, for my ultrasonic cleaner so I put the minis in there, put that in the ultrasonic cleaner which has got water in there and then we got a load of scrap bottles down there Probably not the best idea to keep bottles of IPA around here because potentially there's a fire hazard. Finally, we've got our filament 3D printer. Again, I don't really use that that often. And our... Then we have our air purifier from Levoyet. Um, this one can be controlled by the Amazon devices as well as um, on your phone. Don't really use that, I just turn it on and forget. And then we have another air purifier behind here hopefully catching some of those exhaust fumes that come out of the back of the printer so that's my setup let's go ahead and pour our new resin into the printer and do our first test print so i tend to find with a lot of these cheaper resins um, now this looks a lot better than the anycubit basic which actually cost me more money um, when I bought that. This resin I managed to find on eBay for £16 for a one kilogram bottle which is actually um, a pretty good price considering my go-to resin that I usually use is actually £40 a, a bottle so um, it's what I don't know under half price. So I also tend to find with some of these cheaper resins as well that you tend to need even more supports um, I can see here one of them's pulled away but that might just be where it was sat hanging for um, quite a long time so I did put these on for print before I went to work but um, at first glance the actual quality looks quite good. I'm going to go ahead and pop these off so again they've come off quite nicely so far I can still see everything seems to have printed okay. Um, I do need to clean them but 
like it's it still kind of feels a little bit flexible which is good so the Soraya Tech stuff is has got a little bit of flex in it but this doesn't seem that far off so I'm going to go ahead clean this off and we'll have a closer look see how he's come out to clean it I basically just pull it in the um, I dunk it into my PA then I pull it in the ultrasonic cleaner for about five minutes and um, then I give it a good um, brushing over with my toothbrush with my cleanest of IPA. Broken arm. Broken gun. All right, so that's my first test print done. I do think the actual quality of the resin has come out very nice. Uh, on the left, you've got the Soriatec Fast Navy, which is what I've been using. Now this comes in at about 40 pound a bottle of one litre, which is one kilogram. And the Anycubic resin on the right, um, the Craftsman Grey, that is 16 pounds at the moment on eBay for a one litre bottle, so it's under half the price. So considering it's under half the price, let me just try and get a close-up. Um, like you said, the detail on the Mini 8K that it can produce is actually really good. Um, now I can't compare this to any other printers because I don't actually have any. I've only got the Sonic Mini 8K. Um, but as you can see, the Emil from Halo Reach holding a grenade has come out pretty nicely. Um, you can buy this model on Colts if you're interested. Um, and then again, let's just compare that to the ODSD which is again made out of the Soriatec Fast Navy and again I've had absolutely really good results with the Soriatec um, so for these videos really all I need to do is show the end result which is this one and if I've had any failed prints and in this one in this circumstance I did I had um, two out of the five fail um, so two of the arms broke off when I was pulling the support soft um, but overall it's still got a little bit of flex to it which is nice so it's not like completely glass like um, now I have cured this model for about one minute one and a half minutes um, but nothing's you know instantly breaking off so the minute I touch it with a brush obviously I don't want this gun to snap in two so again there is still a little bit of flex with this resin, which I'm actually pleasantly surprised because the Anycubic basic resin, their basic grey, um, it was a bit brittle, almost like glass. And again, if we look at this, um, like I wouldn't have wanted to have printed these before in any other resin because um, because of almost like how glass like the some of the basic resins are. If I started doing this, um, it would break. Um, as you can see the Soriatec Fast has a sort of nice flex to it. Now obviously this will snap if I put too much force on it. But I tend to find that overall um, the, it sort of has a nice flex to the Soriatec stuff. Um, especially this Fast um, Navy. And again I've not mixed this with anything, this is just straight out the bottle. And then if we go back to our um, Craftsman resin. Um, yeah. Like I said, I can push on this gun and it has a similar sort of flex to it. And for half the price of the Soriatec, you know, you'd be very happy if you buy this resin. Um, I personally will probably still use the Soriatec stuff, um, but I will probably mix in um, some of these prints as well with the um, Craftsman or stock up on some of the Craftsman for some of the um, for some more bulk prints. Um, so yeah, if you want to see any more of these videos of my first prints and maybe you're on YouTube and you just want to see what the um, what the resin looks like before buying it, um, I guess this video is for you. 
You can see the back there. Again, detail looks really good. Again, it's not brittle. If I drop this on a hard floor, it probably will break. Um, but overall, I think the um, Anycubic Craftsman gets a thumbs up. So I like the results so much from the Sonic Mini 8K. I've actually just pre-ordered the Sonic Mighty 8K, which is coming out later in the year. Um, so I think around June. Um, so it'd be nice to actually have a bigger build plate because one thing that the um, although the Sonic Mini 8K is currently one of the best printers on the market for detail or for, for miniatures because um, obviously the resolution is so good um, but the build plate is quite small so I'm looking forward to actually having a bigger build plate now the Sonic Mini 8K actually has a um, micron resolution of I think 22 um, which the Sonic Mighty 8K has 28, so it's but a lot, a much larger um, build volume. I think up to 10 inch screen. I think it is. So really excited to get that, and it means I'll be able to print out my miniatures a lot faster.